My name's Amy, and today I'm going to be talking to you about rockets and how they work. And we're going to do some experiments together to discover more about them. So the first question I'm sure you ask is why don't we use aeroplanes to fly into space? It sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? But there are two problems, and both of them are the result of something which we take for granted here on Earth, not being there when we go into space. If we compare the design of our aeroplane to the design of our rocket, you can see they look very different. They do have some things in common, but the most obvious thing you'll probably notice is that the aeroplane has wings, but the rocket doesn't. It only has these little fins at the back that look a little bit similar to the tail of our aeroplane. So why doesn't the rocket have wings? Well, aeroplanes use their wings to fly, and a rocket doesn't do that. For an aeroplane, the way it flies is that the air in our atmosphere flows over the wings of the aeroplane as it moves and that generates something called lift and lift is what takes it up into the air. So without the atmosphere, an aeroplane can't fly. The next difference between our aeroplane and our rocket is how they generate their thrust. That's the thing that allows them to take off in the first place and get moving. So what does an aeroplane actually use to generate its thrust? It uses an engine, similar to the one that's in your car. Not exactly the same, but it works in a very similar way. Let me show you. So this is a jet engine. It's the kind of engine that a lot of aeroplanes use to create their thrust. It uses the same chemical reaction as your car does, but it works in a slightly different way. It sucks in air through the front, and that air is used to burn fuel in the centre of the jet engine, which then creates a powerful jet of gas which shoots out the back, and that's what thrusts your aeroplane forward. So would this work in space? Have a think. What might be missing in space that you might need to make an engine like this work? We're going to do an experiment to test to see if the chemical reaction which this engine uses will work when we're in space. We're going to use the air and we're going to use a candle to represent our jet fuel. So we light the candle and the wax of the candle is very similar to the fuel inside your jet engine, and it burns in the same chemical reaction, using the oxygen from the air. We're gonna pop the candle inside the jar and then seal it. What do you think will happen when the oxygen inside the jar runs out? Let's find out. went out. As soon as it had used up all of the oxygen inside the jar, the reaction stops. It stops burning. And that's what will happen with our jet engine. If you take it outside of the Earth's atmosphere, it can't get any oxygen. So the reaction inside the engine will stop and your jet of gas will stop. So we can't use normal engines, internal combustion engines as we call them, in space. If we want to burn something in space, we have to make sure that we take the oxygen with us. So a rocket works differently to a jet engine. It doesn't need the air from the atmosphere. Everything you need for the chemical reaction, which produces the jet of gas, which creates thrust for the rocket, is already inside. The 
chemical reaction happens and the gases shoot out of the back, which makes our rocket thrust up into the air. So let's do an experiment to show how that works. We're going to carry out a chemical reaction inside this jar. I'm going to add the reactants and then I'm going to add some soap so you can see the gas that's being produced. As the reaction happens, the soap and the gases are going to bubble up and shoot out of the top. So obviously, for our real rocket, the opening is at the bottom and the gases shoot out the bottom. But for our experiment, we're going to do it this way so we don't make so much of a mess. All right, let's do it. So we saw the gases come out of the top of our jar. So a chemical reaction can produce a lot of gas, which can create thrust for our rocket. That's obvious. And there are lots of different reactions that you can use to create that jet of gases that you need to push your rocket into space. Throughout history, different rockets have used different chemical reactions. So which chemical reaction do we usually use today. You might be surprised to find out that we're actually using the same chemical reaction as the one inside your normal jet engine, but we're doing it differently. Inside your rocket is your jet fuel, but also oxygen, so it doesn't need the air. Two chemicals combine together and burn just like inside our combustion engine and the jet of product gases shoot out of the back. Those products are usually water and carbon dioxide. Now you might get a little bit of carbon monoxide as well. Now that's not amazing for the environment. As you probably already know, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and we don't really want to produce any more of that than we have to. So we could think about alternatives to our jet fuel type rocket fuel and use something else instead. Now in the past, people have used other things. For example, the space shuttle used hydrogen. Now hydrogen, when it burns, and again, you do need to take oxygen with you, when hydrogen and oxygen combine together, all they produce is water, which is much better for the environment. You don't get any carbon dioxide. Now water is a greenhouse gas itself, but it's much less harmful than the carbon dioxide is. So in future, maybe we can work out a way use hydrogen cheaply and safely enough that we could switch to use hydrogen fueled rockets. So now we know how the rocket creates its thrust, we're going to have a look at why the rocket looks the way that it does. Why is it this shape? Almost all rockets look very similar and as we said before, they're very different from aeroplanes. They don't have any wings because they don't need them. They're not using the 
air to create lift. So without wings, what are the essential design features of a rocket? If you look at rockets, they tend to all be very much the same in their design. They're tall and thin. They tend to have a pointed nose. And lots of them have fins. Not wings, but fins. And they're usually at the bottom, like this one. So we're going to do an experiment to test out why there are fins, why the pointed nose, and why this shape works so well. So first of all, we're going to have a look at why do rockets have fins. As I said before, rockets are usually tall and thin, just like this tube. So you can see, this is a simple tube, I've sealed it on one end, and it's open at the other end, just like a rocket. But this one doesn't have any fins. So would this work as a rocket? We're going to test it out. We're going to launch this version of our rocket, and we're going to compare it to this version of our rocket. The two are exactly the same, except this one has got fins. You can see I've given it three fins, and they are evenly spaced out around the bottom of the rocket. I've also made sure that all the fins are exactly the same shape and exactly the same size. That's really important. So we're going to compare them. Watch myself and my friend Helen as we launch the two rockets. My rocket is going to be this one. I'll be the person on the right. Helen's rocket is going to be this one. She'll be the person on the left. Which one do you think is going to fly best? Have a look, compare the two. What do these fins actually do? Did you see what happened? The rocket without fins couldn't fly straight. As soon as it went off course, it couldn't come back. And it kind of went off to the side. But the rocket with fins flew lovely and straight. The fins stabilise the rocket. That means they stop it from going off course. They use something called air resistance make sure that if the rocket goes slightly off course, it gets pulled back again and carries on flying straight. So they are really important. And a lot of basic rockets use fins for stabilisation. There are other ways of doing it, but this is the easiest. So that's why they're there. So now we know what the fins do, we're going to try another experiment find out why the end of our rocket is pointed. Now, it doesn't have to be. The rocket would still fly just fine if the end wasn't pointed. You've already seen the rocket that we've used before with fins that looked like this flew just fine. But why is it important, or why would we choose to add a pointed nose? So we're going to do a second experiment, this time Helen is going to be launching the rocket without a pointed nose. She'll be the person on the left. I'm going to be launching a version of the rocket with a pointed nose, just like that. And we're going to compare how the two fly. So remember, the one with a pointed nose is the rocket on the right. The one without a pointed nose is the rocket on the left. What's the difference in how they fly?
pretty spot it. The rocket with the pointed nose went a little bit further than the rocket without. That's because the pointed nose makes our rocket more aerodynamic. That means it cuts through the air much more easily than the one with no pointed nose. That means that our rocket will go a little bit further and we'll probably need to use a little bit less fuel, which is great. It saves us money and it's better for the environment. For our last experiment, we're going to see if the number of fins you use makes a difference. If you remember, in our first experiment, when we were working out what the fins actually do, my rocket had three fins, like this one. But the rocket example that I've been showing you throughout this video has actually got four. So which is actually better? Does it make a difference? And why might we choose three fins over four, or four fins over three? So, this time, we're gonna compare a four-fin rocket with a three-fin rocket, and see which one flies better, or if there is any difference at all. So what did you think? Could you tell the difference? I couldn't. The two rockets flew pretty much the same. There was very little difference from adding a fourth fin. The stabilisation with three fins was pretty much just as good, wasn't it? Both of the rockets flew about the same. They're quite small, so three fins is enough. What adding extra fins will do, which might not be great, is add more drag to your rocket. Now drag slows the rocket down and may make it use more fuel. That means that it's harder for your rocket to launch and it's going to cost you a lot more to get your rocket into space. So the best thing for you to do is use as few fins as possible and to make sure that your fins are as small as possible. That's why, if you look at a rocket like the Saturn V, which we used to get to the moon, it does have fins, but compared to the size of the rocket, they are really small. And some rockets today don't use fins for stabilization. They use rocket boosters to stabilize instead. And that means they don't have any drag from their fins. So now we know why rockets look the way they do and how they work. I hope you've enjoyed our experiments. If you want to try making a rocket for yourself, why not check out our website, aerospacebristol.org, for some ideas on how to do it.